Hi, this is virtual problem solving session on axial disc brakes. I put together a problem about a mountain biker that is similar to the last problem on your homework with the solar car. So we have a 150 pound mountain biker riding down a trail with a 20 degree slope on a bike with dual pad rear disc brakes with outer radius of 3.75 and inner radius of 2.25. That's not the radius of the wheel, obviously. That's the, the radius of where the, the the disc brake pads sit on the rotor. So the pad itself subtends an angle of 75 degrees and is made with rigid molded asbestos pads. The wheels on the bike have a diameter of 26 inches and the bike weighs 30 pounds. Based on the capacity of the brake pads, how quickly could the rider hypothetically stop from a speed of 18 miles per hour? So I'm gonna show you what this looks like in a quick drawing. Here is a mountain bike wheel, the spokes and a rotor, and let's draw in some little brake pads. So, I don't know, that looks about to be 75 degrees. So inner radius from the axis of rotation to the, you know, the inside radius of the pad. And then, sorry, this is small, to the outside radius of the pad. So you're given those dimensions, and again, this gray thing is called the rotor, and that's what the pads squeeze against. So let's see what to enter into our tool. So you'll need two equations for this. 1634 is torque as a function of max pressure, friction, and geometry. So here is the equation, and here it is in my tool. And then the actuating force as a function of geometry and pressure. So here's the equation, and again, as it's seen, as it's shown in my tool, 1634, just like axial clutches, the torque is only for a single pad, but the actuating force is kind of pad independent. So we have a rigid molded asbestos pad. So I just picked whatever looked like the application was for disc brakes. So maximum pressure, that's pretty high, of 750 PSI, and then a coefficient of friction between 0.31 and 0.49. So we'll take the middle of the range for the coefficient of friction. So 0.49 plus 0.31 divided by two gives us 0.4, maximum pressure 750. And our dimensions 2.25 inches for the inner radius and 3.75 for the outer radius. So it looks like if we only had one pad on our rotor of our mountain bike, we would be able to generate Hypothetically, if we were to actually achieve this maximum pressure on the pad of 750 PSI, 3,976 pound inches, but we have two pads squeezing against the rotor, so that's going to double our torque capacity, so the braking torque that we can provide. So 7,952. So let's write that down and see how we use that. So braking torque that could be achieved T equals 7,952. This is because we have a double pad or dual pad. Find the braking force that can be achieved. So for that, I'm gonna go back to my picture. So our braking torque is occurring around the axis of rotation. But I kind of think about the braking force as occurring between the bike tire and the road, or in this case, the trail. So the force brake that we are going to be able to generate, if we have the braking torque equals the braking force times the radius of the wheel. So F brake equals T brake over R wheel. So we'll just divide our torque by the radius, so 13 inches. So the braking force is 611.7 pounds. Okay, so we're part of the way there. So now we get into the fun sort of physics 101 stuff. 
So we need to find the acceleration as a function of the braking force that could be achieved. Um, maybe one of my low points of today was having to watch Khan Academy for forces on inclined planes, because I, I don't remember it from high school, but I think I have a handle on it now. So let's draw our wedge. So we have a 20 degree slope. We have a braking force that the rider, who by the way, even though in the figure, the picture, it looks like it is a guy rider, it's definitely a girl mountain biker. So she needs, she needs some braking force to slow down. We have mg, so the force due to gravity straight down. And that has two components, mg cosine theta, and mg sine theta. And then we have the force of the rider going down the hill equal to mass times acceleration. So the braking force essentially has to overcome ma plus mg sine theta. And we're solving for acceleration, so that is our only unknown because we know the weight of the rider and her bike. So let's rearrange our formula. So we have acceleration equals F brake minus mg sine theta over m. So we know F brake is 611.7 pounds. We know theta is 20 degrees. So now we have to deal with uh, pounds versus pound mass. So the key conversion that we need is that one pound force equals 32.174. That's the gravitational constant in English units pound mass feet per second squared. So all we're doing is dividing the weight of the rider and her bike by the gravitational constant to get pounds mass. So M in pounds mass equals 180 divided by 32.174. So 5.595 pound mass. So we have A equals 611.7. So mg, all we would be doing here, we're just, we're, we're going back to 180 pounds because we're multiplying pounds mass by gravitational constant. So 5.595 times 32.174 gives us 180 pounds force. Sine of 20 degrees divided by 5.595. In your homework, you were given a, you know, the bike is traveling or this car is traveling on a flat surface, but I just wanted to um, throw in an inclined plane for fun. 98.33 feet per second squared. And then acceleration equals delta V over delta T. Okay, she was going 18 miles per hour. Hope she was wearing a helmet. We gotta put that into feet per second. I think I've shown you this site before, maybe. I really like it. I've been using it since, I think I was an undergraduate, digitaldutch.com. So go to speed and 18 miles per hour, 26.4 feet per second. So we're assuming she wants to come to a complete stop. So 26.4 feet per second minus zero feet per second divided by delta T equals 98.33 feet per second squared. Technically, I guess acceleration would be negative because she's decelerating, but we're just trying to find the magnitude. So our delta T 
26.4 feet per second divided by 98.33 feet per second squared. The feet will cancel, one of the seconds will ca cancel and the last second will hop back on top. So hypothetically, she could stop in 0.268 seconds. So 0.268 seconds is pretty fast to stop. Uh, so what are the limitations of this answer? One is the fact that we're assuming that the brakes are going to actually develop this maximum pressure so that the maximum the pads could, could uh, um, presumably handle of 750 PSI. I don't know how accurate that would be. I guess it would depend on the capability of the bike to generate that actuating force. My husband has a mountain bike. He has hydraulic brake lines that provide the actuating force to induce this pressure. So that would be a big assumption. And then the other thing is, would you really want to stop on a 20 degree slope from a speed of 18 miles per hour to zero in 0.268 seconds? I hope this helps you with the last problem on your homework. Thanks for watching.